All right. Welcome back to another video tutorial from Somos Biology. And in this video lecture, we are going to talk about uh, enzyme summary. Well, it is a big chapter, right? Enzyme. So it's really difficult for me to put it in a summary, but let's try. Try my best uh, to make as easy as possible. So what we are going to talk about enzyme summary here is first of all, we'll be talking about uh, what is enzyme, the basic, basic properties of enzyme. This is first thing that I'm going to talk about. The second thing that I'm going to talk about is the catalysis, catalysis part of the enzyme. And the third thing that I'll be talking about is the rate of enzymatic reaction, which is very, very important for CSI, NET, GATE, ICMR, ICAR and all these different exams. So first things first is the property of enzymes. Enzymes are what? They are mostly proteins, mostly not, they're, they're actually proteins. Sometimes there are enzymes uh, which are non-protein like RNA can act as an enzyme or ribozyme. So pr proteins uh, which can catalyze. So they are protein uh, used uh, for catalysis, okay, proteins used for catalysis. And that contain a very interesting chemical structure which is known as active site. So the protein catalysis that contains active site, okay. It can be a single active site or it can be active sites, plural active site, okay, which is simply a cleft or a surface of the enzyme which is complementary to binding with the substrate structure, okay. So it's simply something like this. If this is our enzyme, let's say this is a catalytic site or active site. And let's say, assume that this is our substrate, okay? So this is substrate, this is enzyme and substrate and enzyme can fit in their active site just like lock and key fitting, okay? So that's kind of uh, the overall idea. Now, this lock and key binding permit that, permit this enzyme to what it does, it can stabilize, it can stabilize the substrate, it can stabilize the substrate binding, okay, that leads to stabilization of, that leads to stabilization of, stabilization of uh, what is known as a transition state, transition state. A state where the enzyme and substrate are interlocked, the substrate is not exactly on its structure anymore. It is something enzyme substrate complex. At this point, we call it enzyme substrate complex, not as only enzyme or only substrate. This is the transition state, very, very important state. That leads to a fall, that leads to a fall in activation energy, in activation energy. We know for every single uh, reaction there is activation energy. Without the enzyme, the activation energy is huge. Due to this transition state formation, there is a fall in the activation energy and that leads to conversion. That leads to conversion of the substrate into the product. This is all about the enzyme catalysis. Okay, but at the end, there is no structural change of enzyme itself. No change to the enzyme at the end. Okay, although in the transition state, enzyme can link with the substrate in a structural, in like intermediate structure formation, but at the end of the product formed, the enzyme is itself on its own structure. There is no change in the structure of enzyme observed, okay? But the substrate is converted to the product. This is the beauty of enzyme catalysis. So now let's talk about catalysis. What is enzyme catalysis? This is studied using reaction models, okay? Which use reaction, reaction models. So what do you mean by reaction model? 
what is one example of such reaction mode let's take the enzyme let's put substrate ens form this enzyme substrate uh, intermediate then product is formed enzyme is released enzyme remains as it is okay this leads to this leads to what this leads to kinetic equation we are not going to talk about how we derive this equation but this is the most important equation this equation states the v0 or initial velocity of an enzyme equals to v max maximum velocity of that enzyme into substrate concentration divided by km which is the affinity of the enzyme towards substrate plus the substrate concentration which is termed as what which is termed as michaelis Uh, that is A E L I S. Yeah, Michaelis Menten. Michaelis Menten equation. Michaelis Menten equation. Okay, V zero equals K max into substrate concentration divided by K M plus substrate concentration. And this particular equation predicts. This predicts. how if we change if we change the substrate concentration you know third bracket means concentration so if we change the substrate concentration it will affect definitely affect the v0 or the velocity of the enzyme reaction obviously so if we continue to add new substrate molecule the velocity will continue to increase right but if we stop supplying substrate the velocity will fall right so a plot of substrate concentration versus the velocity of the enzyme can be drawn utilizing this michaelis menten equation okay and what is that graph that graph looks something like this okay we have this x axis which is substrate concentration we have y axis which is the velocity v0 and what we can form we can see a curve like this okay what kind of curve it is hyperbolic a hyperbolic curve is formed okay what this graph predicts when the substrate concentration is much greater than km the reaction rate is independent of substrate the thing is normally you know what is came here if we talk about this came came how to draw came if you look at here this is the maximum velocity right this is the v max maximum velocity achieved by the enzyme here cap okay even if we increase substrate concentration velocity will not exceed uh, beyond this okay so the half of the v max is this one half of the v max is this one so if we drag it in the x axis this is the intersect and this is what we call as km so literally i can write i can write it here the km is the substrate concentration at half of the v max okay and one more assumption that we can draw when this substrate concentration is way more than the km value then the reaction rate this enzymatic reaction rate is independent independent of substrate concentration normally the velocity or the reaction rate is dependent of substrate concentration but if the substrate concentration is way more than km value then the enzymatic reaction rate it will be independent of substrate concentration and this is a zero and then when it hits the maximum velocity this is a zero order kinetics okay this is where the zero order kinetics but when the velocity was rising then this one was first order kinetics when the substrate is free 
and substrate is much less than KM. Remember this. This is very very important. When the substrate concentration is less than KM, then it will follow a rapid growth rate, rapid rate, high rate of enzymatic reaction, and that will be first order reaction kinetics. But when the substrate concentration is greater than KM. then the rate will be independent what the rate will be independent of substrate concentration and the reaction will be zero order kinetics this is all about the catalysis summary okay now it's time to see the rate of reaction that particular thing okay so rate of reaction the rate of a enzymatic reaction is influenced by many factors okay one of that factor is the enzyme the enzyme concentration which you can write it simply like enzyme under third third bracket temperature also plays an important role the third thing here what coenzyme you know there are components protein and other components metal components or cofactors can be there okay which may help in the catalysis process fourth thing is the ph fifth is obviously the substrate concentration hmm? and sixth one is the covalent modification these are all the different uh influencers of a enzyme reaction another influencer is there let me write it with red color and that is inhibitor because inhibitor can only do the decrease of the enzyme kinetics or inhibitor actually decreases the enzymatic catalysis activity or rate of enzymatic reaction so this enzyme inhibition that gives us inhibition the enzyme inhibition can be classified as three different uh, type here we'll be talking about two different type which are you know broadly uh, classified one is competitive competitive inhibition the other type is non competitive inhibition okay now in the competitive inhibition okay what happens here in competitive inhibition substrate and inhibitor both are fighting for binding with the enzyme so enzyme has only one site substrate can bind or inhibitor can bind and what happens here is in competitive inhibition the km value increases and the vmax value is unchanged because if we increase the substrate concentration way more than the inhibitor then we can still reach the maximum velocity with that same enzyme reaction hmm? while in non competitive inhibition the km value is unchanged means the affinity of enzyme towards substrate is unchanged but the vmax is decreased so no matter even if we increase the substrate concentration we cannot reach the maximum velocity like the one that we able to reach earlier right so if i draw the same graph here x axis y axis substrate concentration velocity like this and let's say this is the normal graph okay now we are looking at two different types of inhibitions we are looking at this competitive inhibition and what we will see in competitive inhibition the graph will be something like this so maximum velocity can be or vmax can be achieved while non competitive inhibition we will have this vmax is decreased but the value of km will be same okay these are the two important idea okay 
Now the last thing that I must say, I must talk about here. The last component is our allosteric enzymes, okay? Or allosteric regulation. Allosteric enzymes. Allosteric enzyme means you know we have this theory that this is our enzyme. So there is only one active site is there, right? We can also have enzyme. like this where one active site is there or catalytic subunit is site is there another regulatory site is also there those are known as allosteric enzymes they have at least two sites one for catalytic activity another for regulation now what kind of regulation right as i said they these allosteric enzymes most of the time are composed of multiple subunits they are most of the time composed of multiple subunit okay there is a unit for catalysis separately this unit is for catalysis and there is a separate unit for regulation okay and this kind of enzymes they bind most of the time cooperatively like if you think about the hemoglobin structure cooperative binding this is uh, also in this case true and they also show they als always show a sigmoidal a sigmoidal curve when the v0 is plotted against the substrate concentration you will see a sigmoid curve that's what we see in case of hemoglobin's oxygen saturation curve okay now the thing is as i said there is a regulatory site right now this regulatory site has two different role in this regulatory site hmm, activator can bind or inhibitor can bind if activator binds then what it will do it will increase the rate of reaction if inhibitor binds it will decrease the rate of reaction that means in both the cases it will modify the km as well as the vmax value of the enzyme enzymatic reaction or enzyme catalysis got it so this is i think the summary of enzyme reaction finally done if i zoom out you can clearly see all our enzyme summary written in this single page okay i'll be putting that in my website this is the enzymes summary all the different things okay so that's kind of it about the enzyme catalysis enzymes properties and rate of enzyme reactions as well as the allosteric regulation of enzymes so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more and more videos like that in future thank you